Hi and welcome to another electricity lesson. We're still looking at some introductory to topics and uh, I am describing some of the most elemental parts of an electric circuit. Okay, so let's quickly just go back in defining, uh, defining electricity. We said electricity, electricity is the flow of electrons the flow of electrons and then we saw some important things that we needed in order to have a flow of electrons the one thing um, we said we needed is in order for electrons to flow we need a, a substance that will allow it to flow and uh, the substance that is most able to allow for electrons to flow is uh, or the element that is most conductive that is the the property that allows for electron flow is copper so copper so what we need is a conductive material and here i am representing uh, somewhat a conductive material like copper okay so this is now material and in this material we are going to have electrons um, automatically just because it consists of atoms okay and this is not a very pretty pretty line but that's okay um, it consists of atoms and here's my here's my electrons in here oh that's a little bit small I think it's slightly bigger here's my electrons okay And these electrons currently would be stationary they're not moving they well they're moving in the atom but they're not going from one atom to another atom okay so they're not being passed on now the reason why they're not being passed on is because at one of these two ends we need something that would be attracting electrons now if something attracts electrons it is because it is positively charged so we need a positive charge on one end and but even if I have a pull on this end if I do not have a supply on the other end then I will not be able to cause a current okay it will just suck out all of the electrons here and leave this thing positively charged and um, because it, we've taken away all of the electrons so if I have a positive charge I still need in order for this to continue to flow I need a, a source of electrons in here so we need to be adding these all electrons we need to be adding electrons into the system now there's various ways in which we can can do this okay and uh, probably the simplest way that we are going to use in most of our um, examples here is with a normal battery or a cell so what a cell is it's a chemical uh, it has a chemical reaction happening on the inside okay um, and we'll look at some um, some cells later on in this course and how it works on the inside for now it is um, it's just all you need to remember is that the negative side of a cell or a battery is electron rich it's got an excess of electrons on the positive side it is electron poor electron poor Okay, now those are actually misleading terms. It's not really that they're electron poor, but they get electron poor because of the reaction that happens inside here. Okay, and so what happens on the positive side is that it, it becomes positively charged. When it becomes positively charged, it attracts the electron here. The moment the electron is passed on, okay, the atom that's here, the atom that it was a part of, gets a positive charge because now it's donated an electron if it has a positive charge it is attracting attracting the um, electron from the um, from the atom right next to it and therefore its atom is being passed on so now look at this charge this particle gets charged the moment that his electron gets taken then he then he charges the next particle by taking its electron and so the charge is being passed on the positive charge is being passed on and on and on and on so 
This charge is what we call the current. The current. Okay. But the electrons, so, and you can see the current is going in one direction, but electrons are being passed on in the opposite direction. And because I'm passing on my electron, I become negative and I take the electron from behind me. And so, uh, sorry, if my electron is passed on, I become positive. I take the electron next to me, making uh, or behind me, making that atom positive. So current, which is now the the motion current is kind of the motion or the um, the flow of charge the flow of charge okay that would be in the opposite direction while the f um, from the flow of electrons so it's easy to know from what side do um, electrons in that this is now in the external circuit this is called a circuit when I have the negative end um, uh, connected to the positive end of a electron source let's call this the electron source and if this is a conductive material that allows electrons to move this is called an electric circuit and um, and so electrons in in the electric circuit outside of the source electrons will go from the negative electrons flow from negative to positive but the current which is the flow of the charges goes from positive to negative I think it's fairly it makes sense um, I don't know why they actually use this definition of current in the direction of current it's not very useful okay um, but we will look a little bit more um, into this in the next video the last thing I just want to say is that this specifically is called a closed circuit a closed circuit and it's not difficult to understand why okay because in an open circuit we would refer to somewhere in this continuous uh, uh, conducting material um, a break happens okay so if they if a break happens then it's impossible for this electron here okay oh sorry it's not nice okay for this electron here sorry this atom whose electron has now been stolen it has a positive charge not stolen attracted okay <laughs> let's not accuse the the um the atoms of theft okay so this atom in order to attract this atom from here um, oh, sorry this electron from here to go there the only way that that can happen is if they can get close enough remember he's attracting that electron but every atom wants to keep his electrons okay so he's attracting it he's got some sort of force keeping the electron this one has now a bigger force because he has a positive charge and so as I bring these two ends closer and closer to one another have you ever noticed a spark even before you touch them there's the spark <laughs> okay spark I don't know how to draw a spark but <laughs> okay so if we have a spark here that's literally electrons traveling through well, I can't say thin air but traveling through the air to the other part because there's this attractive force on the one side attracting ele electrons from the other side but as long as they're uh, too far apart this will um, this will cause a break in the circuit which means that I can't get the electron from the other side if I don't take this electron um, from here this one is still neutral he's still happy with his electrons so he's not uh, attracting electrons from there cutting off the flow of electrons if there's no flow of electron uh, electrons there's no electricity okay and that is how a switch works okay so a switch is literally just a um, is literally just oh that doesn't work either it's literally just a way of breaking the circuit whenever you switch on your light um, when it's on you've closed the circuit when it's um, off you have literally just lifted up two pins that's not touching anymore and so the circuit is not complete well let me leave you there I'll see you in the next video where we will discuss current and I, I'll try and give you really a, a, a helpful way of viewing current which will be very important later on in order to understand the calculations so I hope I'll see you in that video cheers